Well, hi everybody. My name is Mac Laskowski, and if you are an On One user, this is a uh, this is a big week in the On One world. Uh, Photo Raw 2019 uh, was just released, so not announced. It was announced a couple months ago, but the, the the new version is out and about and ready for you to go ahead and grab and download. So if you want to find out more about that, there's of course a link in the description, but. In this video, I thought we would do uh, just kind of a quick run through of what some of those new features are, introduce you to what's new and uh, make sure you see all the new stuff that you have in this latest version. Let's go ahead and get started. Well, the first thing we should probably look at is the new editing interface. That's probably the uh, the star of the show. So I've got a photo we'll go over on the right hand side and uh, we'll click on the word edit. You'll notice that you don't have develop effects and all that there now. Everything is under edit. So we'll click under edit. And what that's going to do is take you into the interface and, and you'll see on the right hand side. Now you've got two different things you, that we didn't have. We've got several things that we didn't have before, but two specific areas. Number one, you've got layers. So now we can start to add multiple layers into the raw develop environment, which is pretty cool because if you wanted to combine photos together, um, you don't have to go into layers to do it and then back and forth, which was always kind of a pain in the butt. Now you can do that in the same interface. And then the other thing that you'll see here is your develop effects and your local adjustments, as well as the addition of portrait, they're all in the same place here. So now I can just, you know, I can work on develop and then I can jump to effects and add a filter, add a little bit of dynamic contrast. And then if it were a portrait, I could jump into portrait mode. And if I wanted to work on local adjustments like brushing or the graduated filters, I could jump into the local section over here and then jump back and forth between all of them. So I'm not really switching modules here. I'm really in the same place. I'm just changing the controls that I would see right down here below that. Uh, speaking of layers, that is uh, a new feature here. So in, in the midst of all this develop, we also have the ability to go in here and add layers. So right now you're going to see there's one layer in here. Um, I can do a couple of things. I can duplicate this layer if I wanted to work on two different versions of the photo or I can hit that little plus icon and I can choose from another photo. I'm just going to click any photo here, add that on top of it as a layer. And so now I have two images stacked on top of each other and you'll notice you'll get opacity. You get all of your masking controls. Uh, if you click on that and you just go to uh, you jump in here to your masking controls, you'll see that uh, you can work with the mask in any way that you want. Uh, pretty much, you know, sky's the limit between all this stuff. So uh, you've also got blend modes in addition to all that. So you, you've got your full layers environment here. If you wanted to stack one photo on top of another one and blend them together, merge them together, replace a sky, that would all be done right here inside. And the nice part about it is I can go in here, I can change. So I can make some changes to a layer and then I can just go down to the layer before I have to hide that because I can't see it. And then I can make changes to that. And it remembers all your settings. They're all in one raw development environment, which is pretty cool. Okay. Let's, uh, let's go ahead here. Let me, uh, let's back out of here. I'm just going to hit reset everything. Get rid of our layer here. We don't need it at this point here. And, uh, let's delete that layer. And then I'm just going to head back over to browse. So next thing would be portrait. I kind of alluded to it before, but let's go click on a portrait here. Uh, jump over into edit again. And you would of course do any of your portrait settings here, but then let's say you wanted to do some portrait retouching. You can go into portrait mode. Okay. And this is very similar to the portrait mode that, that used to be an on one. It kind of took a hiatus and went away and, uh, and now it's back again. Now you can see here, you got a little, it, it detects faces is essentially what it does. And then once you, once you do that, I'm going to go ahead and delete this. Once you add your faces, you can go through and you can click on your eyes. You can click on your mouth. You can set all of these points inside of there. So as you can see here, I already did that. Uh, but you set, select a little tool there and you click on the eyes and it's going to go in there and add points for your eyes just like that. And then you just go in and kind of maneuver and manipulate them to get to fit the exact shape of the eye. Now, once you do all that, in fact, let's go ahead and change that one a little bit right there. Once you do all that, now that it's detected the eyes and the mouth and all that, now you can go down and start to control blemishes. Uh, you can do skin smoothing. Okay. 
if there is any shine on the face, there's a really good slider here to get rid of it. If people have some little red splotches or, or whatnot on their face, that even this slider comes in really handy to kind of smooth that out. And then range is kind of along the lines of, you know, extending it past um, the areas that it's, it's kind of detected here. You can kind of pull that range in or extend that range. Of course, you got your whitening for your eyes so you can make your eyes whiter. You've got detail in there so you can make them a little bit sharper. And then whitening for the mouth, which you got to make sure you go in there and select the mouth. And then again, I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but you go in and kind of move this around just to make sure you've targeted the right area. So now as I do teeth whitening, you'll see the teeth get whiter or vibrance, which is going to work on the color of the lips. Okay, so that's your portrait mode. Moving on from portrait mode, let's uh, let's jump back over here to browse. Um, we'll take a look at a couple of filters here. So uh, in fact, we'll use the same photo. We'll go over into the edit mode. Um, we'll jump over into effects. And once you're in effects, you're gonna notice there's a couple more filters. So let's click on add filter, which that whole experience is new, um, this whole area. And that's because they've added filters to it and they just kind of need an area to be able to put it. So it's hard to squeeze it into the box over here. Uh, there's even a nice little search area there. So if you want to type in glow, uh, anything with glow or that's got a glow preset in it, you can type that in. So what we'll do is uh, we'll take a look at one new filter, which is curves. So now you have a dedicated curves filter uh, that did used to be in the, I believe it was the tone enhancer had a curve, but tone enhancers got a lot of things in it. So there's just a dedicated curves filter. Uh, as you go past there, click on that and you'll see there is a color adjustment filter. This is very similar and it's also really important to, to kind of mention this. Develop has been kind of condensed. So we used to have color adjustments in develop. Okay. You'll notice here in develop, as I scroll through the changes that we have, it's pretty much condensed to just your technical settings, your tone and your color, your details, your lens correction, and any transformations, things that should be done um, on the photo when it comes to a, a detailed raw perspective. It doesn't mean that the effects aren't working on the raw photo. They are all, all of this is raw non-destructive information we're working with here, but um, it's just simplified it. So uh, color adjustments are typically an effect. And I actually like the, the designation of having just the technical stuff in develop and then the creative stuff in effects. So you've got your color adjustment panel inside of there. And then it's not new, but under one of my favorites, which is vignette, um, big softy, which is always too dark and not quite a large enough. Um, We'll go inside a big softy. One of the things that you're going to see is under type, you see an option for priority. Okay. What priority does is it kind of gives highlight, it kind of gives priority to the highlights uh, in the photo so that they don't necessarily get gray um, or too dark. And also keep some highlight detail in the photo, but overall darken the edges. It's very similar to the, uh, the, the highlight priority that we have inside of Lightroom. If you're ever looking for that type of a vignette, then they've added that in there. So while vignettes are not new, the type priority is. Next up, going on down the line, uh, auto align. So let's take a look at two photos here. Let's say you wanted to do a manual exposure blend. Of course, you can do HDR for all this stuff and all that, but let's say you wanted to manually blend two exposures, and these two are just a little bit off here, as you can see as I go between them, okay? Well, what you would do is you'd click on one and then shift-click on another one, and then you hop over into Layers. Once you go over into Layers, uh, it's going to take both of those photos. It's going to stack them on top of each other. Right, and you'll notice, turn them on and off. Um, and then from here, what we can do is head up to the layer menu, choose auto or align visible layers. Okay. On one's going to go through and align those for you. And now you can see that they're more aligned. And then I can start to use all my masking tools here and I can grab my masking brush, uh, let's say, and I probably wouldn't do it at 100% opacity. But to bring back a little bit of that brighter foreground, I could go in here, probably a little bit higher than that. I could go down here and start to paint in and bring back a little bit of that brighter foreground and kind of merge it in with the darker sky and all that and basically 
kind of manually blend these two layers together, okay? It's, there's, there's multiple ways to do the same thing, so don't say, think that that's the only way that we can auto-align or the only way that we could blend two exposures. Of course, you'd have HDR, you've got shadows and highlights, but that's one method that some people like to use. Okay, let's head back over to Browse. And another tool that uh, has been highly, highly requested that I've seen over the years, I uh, will go ahead, just use the, the same portrait photo we were looking at before is you're going to see over here, there's a text tool, All right? So click on your text tool, go in there and type it in, Sarah Jones, and then you can take that, move it around. It's of course got opacity and uh, all the other fun stuff up here. You can change the font, you can change the size, bold, uh, orientation, all that other fun stuff here. And then just click delete if you ever wanted to just get rid of it. Uh, from there, this one, this this is going to sound weird to you, but this is, I got to say, this one is going to rank up on probably one of my, my highest set or my highest new features. And that is when we go over here, I'm going to take a raw photo into edit. And when we go over here and I, I can start to work, you know, on exposure and highlights and shadows and all that stuff. One of the things, one of the problems, in fact, I'm going to choose a different photo here. We're going to grab one that's probably got most of what we need in it. There we go. So that one's got a little bit more of that blue sky in there. So one of the problems that, that we used to have is I would go over and I would, I'd kind of want to, I'd want to pull back on the exposure. Okay. But obviously the exposure makes the whole photo too dark. So what I would probably want to do is go over here, open up my shadows a little bit more, all right? And then use a brush to, to darken that sky. So we'd go to local adjustments, okay? And these are tools that have been available for quite a while. Go over to local adjustments, bring the exposure down. Here was the problem. The way local adjustments worked up until now is it was not pulling from the raw photo. It was not pulling raw data into this. And so what would happen is, is you're, especially when it came to exposure moves, you're, you would lose a lot of color. You'd lose a lot of tone. If I went in here and darkened this, it would just, it almost just get gray and blah. Same thing for lightning. You know, if you ever tried to lighten an area, it was almost just flat and blah. Well, now it actually is using the raw information. Okay. So I could probably go in here and turn on my perfect brush. I could go down through and start to, of course, I'm using a less than 100% opacity brush, so we wouldn't want to do that, but go through here and let it work on the trees. I won't go through the whole photo, but the idea behind this is that it is using the raw data inside of here, which is really important if you're going to try to do things like I just did here. Um, you want it to do that. You don't want it to be using a uh, a different, I, I'm not even sure how to explain it, but I just, I do know that it wasn't raw information that these sliders were using. So the result was uh, not always, especially if I had a large exposure change to do, the, the result was not always what I'd wanted there. All right, moving on down the line here. We got our text. Uh, another one that's, uh, I think some folks are going to enjoy here is if we head over to Lightroom and you make some Lightroom changes. Now there has been a migration assistant since on one 2018. Um, so the migration assistant has been there, but it only took your collections and certain things and um, it didn't take any of your edits. So now if you look here, you'll see that you've, I've got develop settings on this. I can head up to the file menu, can head down to plugin extras and go down to, and make sure you don't, I made this mistake by the way, cause I still have on one uh, 2018 installed and I went down to my great catalog on one photo and it opened up 2018. So, um, make sure you go down here and, uh, you go down to my great catalog on one photo. And from there, it'll walk you through the assistant to, uh, it explains everything along the way, what's going to come across, what's not going to come across. And, uh, it'll bring all your, all your stuff over and it'll do its best to try to interpret the Lightroom settings. Um, so that your on one develop or edit settings will, will look similar to that. And then finally there is focus stacking. So some people use it for uh, macro close up shooting. Some people use it for landscapes where, you know, you have different focus points and you want sharp from front to back. Um, and the example that I have here, um, you can see, I've got one where focused up close and then another one where I focused off back here in the distance, what you would do is click on one down your command or control key and click on the other one. And then you'll see there's a little focus 
button over here on the right hand side. Click on that and it's going to go through you the first time through you'll get a message that they are constantly improving this stuff i usually just check don't show me again you might see some speckling in here so i click on, i just kind of drag that despeckle uh, option up as far as i can and then you can control your depth of field so um, minimum maximum so as i start to move this you'll see it's pulling in more toward that other exposure as i Bring that to the other side, it brings the original or the other sharp exposure down here in. And then as I move that, you'll see it starts to pull the sharp area from over here and just shows us the sharp area that we had over here. So the, the wider you go with this, the more you're gonna see, the more narrow you go, you can kind of change that field of focus uh, as you move between these two options. And then of course, just click save. It'll even tell you down here, where do you wanna open it when you're done? I would suggest just leave it to develop. Okay, it'll save it as a brand new file and uh, it'll leave you inside of develop when you're done with a new photo that you can then go and edit just like any other photo. Okay, folks, hope you enjoyed. If uh, you want to find out more, go check out on one.com uh, slash Matt K. I actually, they actually set up a, a page for, uh, for, you know, people that are, have followed my videos. So I've got a couple of other videos on the page over there. So again, want to find out more on one.com slash Matt K. Uh, you can download a trial or uh, go ahead if you're already an on one uh, member, you can go ahead and down download the latest update.